Welcome to Kinship Connects, a podcast from SBA Kinship, sharing our stories and our journeys. My name is Floyd Painitz, and today is my great privilege to speak with Mark Honecker. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks for having me, Floyd. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Um, when I first joined Kinship, uh, your name was one that I saw in the connection. It was very important for me to see what other gay people or gay Adventists at that time looked like, you know. Uh, so you were there and um, I remember you from somewhere else as well. And so we're gonna get into more of that in just a little bit. But uh, first, let me just, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you live now and uh, what you're up to these days. Well, uh, I live in uh, Los Angeles still. I've, I've lived in the Hollywood area for 20, 25 years. Uh, and even before that, I mean, I've lived in the LA area mm -hmm. basically since, uh, since adulthood. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Just a lot of places. I've lived in Silver Lake. I've lived in West Hollywood. I've lived in Mid Wilshire. It's just so, and, yeah. I've been in, and your favorite place is your favorite place to live? I actually, lo I love where I am now. Yeah. Um, I, I have an apartment that overlooks uh, 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 an athletic field. So I have uh, plenty, uh, plenty of, of view. I'm mm -hmm. on the third floor. Uh, <laughs> on July 4th, I can go on the roof and see no fewer than like two dozen uh, firework displays across Los Angeles. Wow. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm sure your friends like to come visit you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't had any parties since they technically don't want you on the roof, but oh. you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, cool, cool. So, so you, you said, did you grow up in that area as well as a kid? I, no, I was born and raised in the Inland Empire, Riverside. Uh, and so I lived in Riverside and Loma Linda for- the Adventist Mecca. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, and, yeah, go ahead. Until I went to high school and then I went to Scottsdale, Arizona to Thunderbird Academy. So just because it, it was a found home situation where I, I just, I had to get away from a new stepmother that I just wasn't jiving with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Had you been in Adventist schools and in elementary as well? No, I was actually born and raised Baptist. Uh, and uh, my mother passed away in a car accident when I was nine. And then when I was 11, my dad married a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, okay. um, and took a lot of grief from it, actually. it's Because uh, in those days, changing religions was just very much frowned upon. Like, if you found the way, the truth, and the light, what are you doing? Right, right. Um, right. But, I, yeah, I don't want to bore people with family. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was just, uh, and, and so we converted to Seventh-day Adventism. Okay. And honestly, even at that point, even though as a kid, at 11 year old, you know, you're always going to go with what mom and dad say to do. Sure. Especially because, you know, when you were raised in those days in the 60s, you always did what mom and dad did, what told you to do, you, you right. know, wasn't like today where they fight with their parents. Uh, but even then, even though I went along with it, there was a part of me that was already like, what, what? <laughs> how does this work now? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll be Seventh-day Adventist, whatever that is. Uh -huh. So it was like, it's like for the first 11 years of my life, I was Baptist. Then for the next 11 years, I was Seventh-day Adventist. And then after that was all working my way out of that. Okay. I, I, I refer to myself as a recovering Seventh-day Adventist these days. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and that's an ongoing process, I'm sure. That that will be an ongoing process forever. Yeah, oh. yeah. My light went out here. Hang on. 
I'm not sure why that happened. What a lovely plaid. <laughs> yes, yes. Technology at its best. Here we go. Yes, yes, no. yes. <laughs> okay. Well, great. So, so the Thunderbird was a boarding academy. So that was something new, being away from home, being in an Adventist environment. And discovering that I liked other boys. Ah, okay. So had you thought that before already, or did that really um, show itself in the academy? Um, honestly, I, my very first inklings I, that I, you know, you can't know when you're six years old, but when Batman first came on TV with Adam West, um, I was very excited by Batman. You were in love. You knew you I found... loved Batman. Yeah. Uh, and surprisingly, unlike most gay boys who seem to prefer Robin, yeah. I was all about I was all about Batman. Wow. Yeah. You know, I I wanted the big the big main man. You know. Right. Right. So and uh, Thunderbird also had communal showers, uh, and that is where I very definitely realized <laughs> that I was I was gay. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> were, were there other gay students there that you knew of or that were out and you could talk to? Believe it or not, my I, I went there for my sophomore year. Uh, and in at, at Thunderbird, they, they have a mountain retreat up in Prescott, Arizona. The church owns a camp up there where the camp meetings of Arizona are held. Mm -hmm. And uh, the school would always go up for a prayer retreat weekend during like October, like the second month after school was open. And I had already met a guy, uh, his name was Jeff Gilliland, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. But we, we went, we were on at the camp meet, we went to this prayer retreat and Jeff and I didn't feel like staying for Vespers or whatever. So we went back to our cabin mm -hmm. and uh, we got in our bunk beds and touching started happening, mutual touching started happening that just mm -hmm. snowballed into, you know, sex. And right, right. So, uh, and, and then pretty much for like the next two years, both of us, I think, were so ashamed of what we'd done that he avoided me and I avoided him. Uh, you know, don't that, talk about it. No, and then you're going through your period of trying to pray it away, trying, you know, why, praying to God, why did you make me this way? Why do I have, you know, you go through all of that, blah, 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 blah. Shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, did you hear from at the academy like worships and stuff? You know, did they talk about the the H word that it was bad and sinful, or was it just a kind of an assumed thing? You know, in those days, they didn't really talk about it specifically. It just came under the umbrella of all of the sinning that is out, you know, possible out there. Right, right, right. You know, they would just lump that in with everything else without shining a particular light on it. Right. Uh, but I, I just knew in the church that, you know, some sinning is worse than others. And being a homo was like one of murderer. Is it was up there. Yeah. 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 You were a better Christian if you were a murderer than if you were a homo. And that's that's really rough on you to to know that. Oh, that's an incredible yeah. psyche destroyer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So then after Thunderbird, then you went back home or you went to college or? No, actually, I got hired by the Heritage Singers right out of high school. Okay, okay. Um, and so I was, uh, <laughs> I was with them for a year and a half and then got kicked out for having an affair with the other tenor. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, so before uh, we totally jump into that, <laughs> Uh, obviously singing was either something that had been a part of you for a while, had you been trained in singing, or it just came naturally? I, I just found a love for it in high school. I loved being in the choir and being in the special choir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that started my lifelong love affair of singing. Uh, and then the Heritage Singers came and performed at the Academy 
one day and just uh, uh, one of the altos and I just on a lark decided to audition. So. So they had not been in existence for too long or too many years before that, right? Well, I graduated in 78 and they started in 71. So they were, you know. They were established. Ago. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Very much so. They were very much the, you know, most popular singing group in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, they did that fairly quickly. They did that within like the first four years of their existence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, yeah. I remember growing up with them and, oh, uh, yeah. you know, on Sabbath, that was the one music I could put a record on, on the record player and actually listen to, you know, all of, all their songs or whatever uh-huh. over and over again. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So you auditioned with Max or how did that go? Well, um, at the time, there were two uh singing groups there's the east coast group and the west coast group (laughs) and max was only in the west coast group and the east coast group was the one that came to thunderbird so no i didn't audition with max uh i I auditioned with a guy by the name of dave mock Um, so you were part of the east coast group then or how did that work i was part of the east coast group the east coast group uh, the west coast group just did California, Oregon, and Washington. Mm. Um, Because within eight years, Max was tired of going around and around the country. (laughs) Yeah, sure, sure. And he's from Washington. So they would sing on the weekends. And then every summer, they would have a six-week Northwest tour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what Max settled into doing for decades. Okay. Uh, uh, and then they then they had the East Coast group that would tour the rest of the United States. Right, which was the major part of the heartland and oh yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me to forty six states. Wow, wow. So, yeah. So you were touring full time after that. Oh yeah, it was fifty weeks out of the fifty out of fifty two weeks a year. Wow, that's kind of grueling. That's a lot of a lot yeah. of work. And in the the days when I first joined the group, they didn't stay in hotels. We stayed in people's homes right. for the week, throughout the week. And then we would stay in hotels on Saturday, Sunday, uh-huh. or Friday, Saturday nights. Right. Uh, and, and so that was, well, you know, when you're a kid, it's all fun. Sure. It, it was fun. You don't mind sleeping in a sleeping bag or on the couch or something like that? Oh, no. No. And, and honestly... Are you kidding? When people like people would give up their master bedrooms to have us sleep in them and they would go sleep in the den or the couch. <laughs> That's sure. the way people treated. Well, you guys were royalty. You were royalty. <laughs> you were God sent. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you got paid really well for this, right? Oh, God. No, I think if I remember correctly, we got a stipend of like $600 a month. And, um, and, and, you know, it's like, you basically paid for your food out of that, because they, they obviously paid for your clothes that you wore in concerts. uh, uh, And they paid for hotels on the weekends. So basically, that was $600 a month to spend on food. Which right. at that time, you didn't, you know, sure. there was no way you're going to spend six hundred dollars a month on food. Right, 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 <laughs> right. But you didn't get rich from it either. No, no, not in any way, shape, or form. Because you know, we could we just go to a mall and blow it all. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and it still, even then, didn't take long to blow through six hundred dollars. This is true. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. So. You know, I, I every once in a while I'll, I'll go to YouTube and I'll pull up heritage singers and they have these playlists that go. On oh, I know all day long, and um, you know, occasionally I, I it's kind of um, nostalgic to listen to yeah. songs. It's like, oh, I remember that, and I remember you know going to church as a kid and they came to the church and sang, and at that time I thought you know the guys were so cute because they were all in these <laughs> ginger suits. Oh yeah, we and, had a lot uh, of guys. you know. The, today we would call it gay clothing, actually. You 
know, they kind of look, everybody looked kind of gay. Well, I mean, leisure suits, come on. <laughs> leisure suits were so gay. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So everybody. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, my confession is that I do remember this one guy that was in the group. And his name was Mark Honecker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought he was the cutest one. He had the best voice and his hair was just just perfect <laughs> and, and whatever. So I, I do remember you. And then when I joined Kinship, I saw that you were in some of the connections and your name was mentioned here and there. And it was like, I was all excited because um, one of us was in the group of the heritage singers. The, uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I, we're everywhere kind of thing and that really and i'm not happy the only, and proud I, i'm yeah, sorry and I'm, I'm not the only one okay. um, so, the others just, uh the others just i guess don't do a whole lot with kinship um i don't think there have been any gay people in it for a long time right um like i think ross brown was probably the last one in it and that was 20, 30 years ago. They got really, they got really good at like feeling out who was gay and who wasn't and quietly not hiring those that weren't gay. Was so, there ever any big conflict uh, like between mean, Max or, or the leaders and, and- You mean besides me getting kicked out? <laughs> hey, we'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll talk about that, but, but I mean, I had always heard that, that Max or, or the leaders in the group were kind of homophobic and... Uh... As uh, not any more so than the Seventh-day Adventist church in general. They were just good Seventh-day Adventist people. And if you were a good Seventh-day Adventist, you're damn right you were homophobic. Yeah. For sure. Uh, militantly so. Okay. But I, I didn't put that, like, I don't think they were any more homophobic than anybody else. They were just part of that ethos. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of don't ask, don't tell, behind the scenes connections happening. Sure. Well, I don't know about connections. But, but you knew they, of each other. They, we knew of each other, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so when this, was this then found out and that's how it ended? Or? Well, a year and a half after I'd been here, what, would happen is that uh, about halfway through the tour, Max would fly out, Max and Lucy would fly out and just check on us and see how we were doing, listen to our concerts, making sure that, you know, we were carrying on the heritage sound and everything. Um, and people were noticing that the other tenor and I were starting to spend a lot of time together. Uh, and uh, I was I was the person in charge of assigning who went home with whom uh, to spend nights with, uh -huh. and uh, as far as I knew, I was doing it. You know, I just had a system of going around, but I was accused of doing it with Robbie, the other tenor, the most. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, I don't think so, but okay. Uh, and I, there was a point where Max and Lucy came. Usually they would come when we were there either in Boston or New York, because it would take that long to work our way east. Right. Uh, but this year they came in Portland, Maine, which was a very strange choice. Uh -huh. And so I knew something was up. Uh, and when we got to Boston, uh, they started handing out hotel room keys to everybody except Robbie and I, and they said, we'd like to see you two in our room. And I was like, oh, well, here it is. It's the end. I'm going home today. I just, you know, I knew it. Uh, and so when we got to their bedroom, they had gone through our closets and taken out stuff, evidence, you know, things that Robbie and I had bought for each other or pictures that we had taken together. Mm -hmm. that were just ours right and of course Robbie was still new and freaked out um so he was crying most of the time I was like well jigs up uh 
I guess we're going home today. Yeah. Um, I, I was kind of tired of, I had already been tired of them being so suspicious of us. And I was tired of pussyfooting around. Mm -hmm. And there, there was just that part of me, uh, we spoke before the recording started that I, I just knew that I wanted to be an honest person in my life. And I was kind of glad to be relieved of this secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the only thing is that on their way to the airport, uh, I asked them, did you tell our parents? And they said, yeah, we took the liberty of telling you now why you're coming home. So I, I feel bad in the sense that my parents had to find out in the most humiliating way. Right, right. It really could have come from me. Exactly. On the other hand, as a 19 year old, I was so friggin' relieved that I didn't have to do it. At least you didn't have to say those words. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, which, uh, you know, there's good and bad to that uh, sure. at the time. Sure. But it was a nonstop, it's a, it's a five hour nonstop flight from Boston to LA. Mm -hmm. And in that five hours, I was just like, okay, this is it. We're done. Mm -hmm. We played all the games. We prayed all the praying. We've listened to all the tapes. Right. This is the way it's going to be. And so we're done pussy putting around with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we get in the car on the way home and my mom is like, I just picture you as a wounded soldier in God's army. And, you know, I'm a 19 year old kid rolling my eyes in the back seat. Right, right. And they're like, well, you know, we have someone we would like you to see, a counselor. Oh. And I'm like, are they a Seventh day Adventist counselor? And they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, you know, nine out of 10 therapists would be on my side on this. So I hate to tell you that I would question the one. Right, right. So, so I'm going to decline seeing your counselor because mm. this is the way I am and this is the way it's going to be. Good, good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you didn't go to any counseling after that or anything? No, no. Good. No. And like I had been home for a month living with my parents when I asked if I could have Robbie come out and visit us. Mm -hmm. And my mom just broke complete, like, hysterical crying. Mm. And at that point, I was like, okay, I can't live with you. Because I'm just, I'm not going to go through this with you. Right. Uh, I've been dealing with this since, you know, my sophomore year of high school, four years ago now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is all new to you. But <laughs> right, right. being out of the closet might be new to me, but I am tired of the games. Yeah, like the yeah. praying didn't work, reading the Bible didn't work. Just stop, stop. Mm -hmm. all. So, yeah. And did they ever come around? Did it? <sighs> they came around to a position of toleration. Okay. Um, to this day, I am I'm still considering whether to undo my stepmother's adoption um, because she will not give up her negative anti, you know, homophobic beliefs about it. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, you know, and it, it kills her that I want to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, it kills me that you to this day still believe that. Right. Well, that's because every word in the Bible is true. Every word. And I'm like, I'm like, oh. This this is why, Mom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So she's still very much Seventh Day Adventist, then. Oh yes, oh yeah. Is your is your dad still alive? No, he passed away quite a few years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, honestly, my my birth mother passed away when I was nine, mm -hmm. and and before she died, they were having marital problems. And I kind of hated my father when I was nine years old. Like I would hear them arguing in the kitchen and I, my little nine-year-old self wanted to run into a drawer and pull out a big knife and stab daddy with it for yelling at mommy like that. 
Sure, sure. Protective, yeah. Yeah. So, so when my mom died, I really didn't feel like I had anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can understand that. And I, I probably imagine when the Heritage Singers came along, it felt at least in the beginning like a new family that you were going to be a part of. Well, it, uh, amazingly, it was actually just going to Thunderbird Academy yeah. that was really helpful uh -huh. because Loma Linda Academy is so classist. Like you were either a doctor's kid or you weren't a doctor's kid. Right. And if you weren't a doctor's kid, you were second class mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though that my dad might have made more money than their doctor dads, Right. He's still that, a doctor. So, right. yeah. It was uh, that status. Yeah. It was extremely status conscious. Mm -hmm. So, that was on top of not getting along with my stepmother. That was another reason that uh, a friend of mine said he was going out to Thunderbird Academy. And I said, What's that? And that was when I found out that the Seventh day Adventists had a network of academies across the United States. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Really? I was like, Going away to school? Yay. <laughs> exactly. Up, get away from step evil stepmother. <laughs> right. Wrong, and these right. idiot kids, these horrible kids. Wow. wow. Uh, and at Thunderbird, they were so not class conscious. Mm -hmm. And there I felt like I was in a new family. Good. That was really quite wonderful. I loved yeah. Thunderbird. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily continually continue to love some of my classmates. <laughs> I think a lot of people are like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no regrets during the Heritage Singer period, really? Or do you have any regrets? No, no, I loved the Heritage Singer period. Um, I was kicked out. I may have been kicked out a year and a half I was in it. Three months later, they asked me to sing with the West Coast group. Oh, really? Oh. And so I continued to sing with the Heritage Singers for another like three years. Oh, my goodness. So okay. I was with them basically from 78 until the end of 82. Nice. Okay. Okay. I was kicked out in 79 and then brought back in 79. So did the new group, not, not the new group, but the other group know that you had been kicked out in the whole details? They did. And they, they were not happy. Yeah. That, that you were kicked out. That Max yeah, they, kicked you out. Yeah. But come to find out many, many years later, after I was not in the group anymore, mm -hmm. that my parents, unbeknownst to me, had called Max and Lucy. And remember I told you why, when I told my mom I wanted Robbie come, she freaked out, mm -hmm. like, I can't live with you. Well, I went to go live with my uncle in LA, uh -huh. uh, who was not Seventh-day Adventist. And so my mom and, or my stepmom and dad got on the phone to Max and Lucy and were like, he's only 19, he's not, you know, he's not an adult yet. Is there any way you could take him back? You know, so my parents begged Max and Lucy <laughs> uh -huh. to take me because they didn't want to release me into the world quite yet. Is wow. Like, wow. Yeah. 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 And so that's why, and, and it, like I said, I knew nothing of this. All I knew <laughs> is that three months later, you know, would you like to come and sing with the West Coast group? Yeah. yeah. So wow. I was. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so it does sound like your parents were proud of you or proud that, you know, the status that you were part of this Adventist singing group. Oh, they group. loved it. Oh, they loved it. Yeah. But yeah. they also knew on some level, it's like, yes, it's a, again, it's a dual edged sword because the chances of a kid going back to college after they have been out of academia for a while, less than, you know, wow. and I, I did, I, I mean, I did some, I did a year at Northridge and a year at UCLA, but I, I never finished college. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was what they were worried about. Yeah, 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 exactly. You still sing? You know, I, I stopped uh, like four or five years ago. 
I was just getting old and I didn't I didn't like the way my voice was sounding as I was getting older. I'm okay. Like, you know, I, I can retire. It's, I, I sang a lot. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was going to ask if you wanted to sing a, a couple bars for us. Oh, but, God, uh... no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll let you off the hook on that one. So what was your favorite song, though? Your favorite hymn or heritage singer song? In Heritage? Yeah. Or... Yeah, in Heritage. Yeah, in Heritage Singers. What song do you have a favorite? Um... Well, one I got to sing that I loved doing was Rise Again. Um, but songs that I didn't necessarily have a solo on, I always love I Am Willing, Lord. Okay. Okay. I, I, I loved that whole album. It was, mm -hmm. at, at the time, it was the poppiest yet that they'd gone. And that's the kind of music that I liked anyway. So I was like, yes, go the you know, contemporary route. Instead of so you were one of the ones that were getting all the conservative Adventists up in a roar about Absolutely. those heritage singers are just going overboard. I know those, they, they have drums on this yes. album. Oh my God. And the, if you listen to it now, the drums are like at a 0.5 on a scale. You barely hear them. Yeah. yeah. You can barely hear them. But Adventists were so up in arms about it. Oh. <laughs> Wow, wow. Yeah, you had quite a few solos or several solos. I know or you were singing. There was a, a couple one where I saw a female was singing part of the solo and then you would sing. Well, if you're watching TV, that n wasn't necessarily my voice um, because the Max and Lucy used all of the Heritage uh, Library. We made videos of all of them of people that were had not been in the group for many years mm -hmm. and so they weren't going to go call people who had been in there six years ago just to come and be on tv right. so you know i've been a lot of tenors on, the, <laughs> okay. on a lot of the videos yeah yeah wow uh, I, you know i had a solo in mighty jordan roll uh what was uh Rhonda and I had a, a duet um it wasn't it it was one of the later albums that I was in and I, it, I can't even remember it now see <laughs> yeah so when y'all were on stage it was always live y'all never did any lip syncing huh uh basically yes uh depended on the size of the venue like if it was over a thousand people mm -hmm. we had um back small backing vocal tracks just to fill out the sound right, uh, right. but they weren't anything that we leaned on yeah, uh, yeah uh but yeah otherwise it was all total there were there were no we might have been singing to orchestral tracks but there was no voice on them okay okay um yeah cool cool <laughs> yeah so so where did your life take you after heritage singers then um, because I was good with, because I had been a pianist, I was good with my hands so I could type really quickly, mm -hmm. which led me to the legal field, oh. which I've been in for close to 40 years now. Wow. And, okay. and a, it used to be called word processing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But like back in 1990, mm -hmm. um, because like, like any industry, everything has consolidated and positions re reimagined and all that. Mm -hmm. And so my job now is basically knowing the full panoply of Microsoft software and being able to produce documents, right. uh, whether it's in Excel or Photoshop or Word or uh, mm -hmm. what, whatever is needed for the case. Right, right, right. So, yeah. and this point i'm <laughs> at this point i'm only eight and a half years from retirement That's but you're not I'm counting are you <laughs> oh, <this minute>. wow. <laughs> yeah i bet i bet yeah yeah well after the heritage singers did you still attend any adventist churches there in the la area no no so no. kind of when when that was over your relationship with adventism was over my relationship with Adventism was definitely over. And then 
I met my best friend in 94, 93, 92, somewhere in there, um, who had grown up Catholic, but had, was already atheist. Um, and because he was a scientist, he, like his special, at the time his specialty was biology. Um, and my losing complete religion was just kind of a 10 year long process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it would come in just little weird ways. Um, like one thing, you know, I held on to uh, creationism um, for, for a pretty long time. Uh, and, and just with the thought that, that this Big Bang Theory was some crackpot competing theory. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then to see something as simple as a Friends episode yeah. where Ross, where Rachel was saying something flippant about Ross's job. Mm -hmm. You know, and how cute it was. Like, are you find, Are you looking for the missing link? You know, with all seriousness, he was like, no, we found that. There are no missing links anymore. Right, right, right. Everything, you know, or she'd make some joke about a dinosaur, you know, like dinosaurs are real. And he goes, no, we have full <laughs> bones of actual. <laughs> and and it, it was just little things like that, that in my brain were going, this is not a crackpot competing theory. Right, right. You know, this is accepted science. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you get more into it, you start realizing that evolution, and, and it's not this compartmentalized part of science. Mm -hmm. Evolution is like the basis for every other branch of science, mm -hmm. be it chemistry or biology or physiology uh, astronomy yeah you know it's it's all interconnected mm -hmm. it's creationism that has to be compartmentalized because it's based on magic mm -hmm. like to have the universe come into being in six actual days that's magic right right and i love I've always loved the magic of TV and movies, mm -hmm. but if anything taught me, magic is fun and entertaining, but it's not reality. Mm -hmm. Reality is hard, cold facts. Yeah, yeah. And so it was, it was the magic of movies that made me realize the impossibility of creationism. Right, right. Maybe that's why the FS didn't want you to watch movies. Exactly. It, it, it's one of the reasons they don't. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you get these messages that you have no idea where they're going to come from. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that a Friends episode would, you know, have any kind of what? light go on somebody's sure. head? Yeah. And yet I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those things are more powerful sermons than a Sabbath 11 o'clock sitting in the pew sermon. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. So it just got hard for you to connect the dots as people were telling you they needed to be connected. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's like, well, if you realize that, you know, when you're like, I, like my stepmother is like, every word in the Bible is true. It's like, well, if such is the case, if one word is not true, then the entire thing is suspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's when I realized, oh, there are some things in the Bible that just aren't true, making the whole book suspect. Right, right. And so that just, and then it just, it's another 10 years of realizing, of just seeing how hard the evangelical church and Christianity in general has fought so hard against science, mm -hmm. you know, starting with the Scopes trial back in the early 1900s right. and, and you know it's like every time religion has inserted itself into some 
area of facts, mm -hmm. it's always on the wrong side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Are you angry at the Adventist Church or the Baptist Church? <laughs> no, not in, not. I, I'm just angry at religion in general. Mm -hmm. At at the stupidity that it engenders in people's brains. Right. right. Ask them to just accept on faith. It's such this huge word. I'm like, that's called a suspension of disbelief. You have to do that when you see Raiders of the Lost Ark, you idiots. <laughs> right. right. No, I'm suspending my disbelief for actual beliefs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good for you. You sound like you're in a a good space and you're happy yes and i think if that's I destroy all religion on the planet and get people to realize that it's not necessary right that even on a molecular even on an animal level animals don't you know most animals want to propagate and keep the species going so why harm others of your kind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that's just kind of basic science basic survival technique you don't need the Ten Commandments for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see so many religious people. Oh my God, the world would just, it would devolve into just a murder spree if we got rid of religion. I'm like, you okay there? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, no, no, we wouldn't. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So do you have any words of wisdom or advice for people just now coming out who are in the Adventist church? You know, maybe somebody at Thunderbird Academy or, or wherever. Um, Ooh, it's so, you know, everybody has their own journey that they have to take. They have to discover it for themselves. I can, you know, we can all tell them people were till we're blue in the face, but until you come to that realization yourself, um, I guess so it would be trust in your own brain, trust in the intelligence that was given you. Right, right. Good. And, and if something doesn't make sense, it probably doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's, that's really, really good advice. Good words. Yeah. Um, yeah most uh, this, this whole anti-vaccine that has taken hold of the country of people who have researched on the internet it's like, no, you don't know how to research. No. Right, right. Like when it comes to actual science and stuff, you should listen to the experts. Yeah. Dr. And Google doesn't know everything. No, exactly. <laughs> or Dr. Facebook or whatever. <laughs> right. <sighs> yeah. no, that's, that's great. Any, any other final words of wisdom for our listeners, our viewers? Oh. If they want to see you, they can go to, to YouTube and Live Google Heritage life. Singers. They could. And, 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 see, and see some of my prior lives. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend that, actually. <laughs> uh, I was much cuter back then. <laughs> well, I don't think cuter. I think uh, it was just we all age and we age gracefully. So that's that's all good. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, Freddie, for, for providing such a nice, starry background for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I well, uh, you you did the star back there, the the, I, the planet somehow. Oh, no. uh, that must be Zoom's default it, or something. A random or something, but yeah, it's fitting. It's fitting okay. for us for this conversation. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, great, great. I appreciate you. And uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm going to say my closing here and uh, just want to thank you, Mark, for uh, sharing with us today and tell all the people who joined us. I'm very happy that uh, this uh, will be up on podcast and that people can view it you know, for years to come, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> we hope that today's podcast was interesting and it's given our listeners something to think about. Don't say happy this kitchen is the LGBTQIA plus affirming community for current and former Adventists. And we welcome not only the Rainbow Alphabet members, but also the parents, family members who want to learn more about how to support their loved ones and support allies and stand with us to make a difference in their future. 
check us out on the web at sdapension.org or follow us on social media at sdapension. If you have any questions or comments, you can always email me at info at sdapension.org. We look forward to having you join us for an upcoming podcast. Thanks a lot and have a great time.